Audi A7 2018 present. The market for Rakush two-door coupés is on life support at the moment. Even our favorite coupé, the Audi TT, could morph into a four-door coupé. But that remains to be seen, and right now you could buy yourself a used example of a stylish four-door Audi coupé in the form of the A7, a car packed with all the latest tech and lots of practicality that can be had for the price of a brand new TT. There are two petrol and three diesel options, available in either turbocharged 2-liter or 3-liter forms. The 2-liter models are available with or without quattro four-wheel drive and get a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic, while the 3-liter six-cylinder diesel gets an 8-speed torque converter and quattro as standard. Mild hybrid technology that helps to save fuel is reserved for the 55 TFSI petrol and 50 TDI diesel. Don't expect engaging driving dynamics, because the A7 has been set up to provide safe and predictable handling above all else. Four-wheel drive models have plenty of traction in even the trickiest of weather conditions, plus there is enough grip for the A7 to hang on to the apex of a corner with little deviation. However, you do feel removed from the process of piloting the A7, and this may upset keen drivers. Also, you end up having to put your foot down more in the A7 than you'd expect in order to get the car to accelerate quickly enough to make a particular gap to merge into traffic. This is because both the 7 and 8 speed autos are reluctant to kick down, and the accelerator response of all models have been dulled in order to improve fuel economy and emissions levels. This can be improved if you put the engine in dynamic mode and the gearbox into its sport setting, but even then it still can't beat the responsiveness of the Mercedes CLS. Happily, the A7 can trounce the CLS for practicality. The Audi has a massive boot and a much more useful hatchback opening to get larger items in, particularly useful if you need to put a child sports chair in there. The rear seats can be made fold down in a 40 by 20 by 40 split, increasing versatility further. Passenger accommodation is only an issue if you happen to be over 6 foot tall and you're sitting in the back. There's a lot of leg and shoulder room for all. Oldman's storage has been well thought out. You got deep door pockets, a large center console, and cup holders for all. The interior is also beautifully assembled and adorned with sumptuous finishes throughout. However, while it may look like a tech lover's paradise, with conventional buttons swept away in favor of a twin touchscreen setup, this Space Age dashboard isn't the most intuitive in use. The topmost screen deals with infotainment, sat nav, and Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. The lower display operates the climate control, heated seats, and other minor functions. Unfortunately, you have to look away from the road in order to touch the control icons on either screen, and this can be distracting while driving. The interior of the previous generation A7 was easier to use. The old A7 certainly didn't come with as much equipment as the latest version though. Sport in the entry-level model and comes with a virtual cockpit digital display, LED head and rear lights, leather seats, 19-inch alloy wheels, front and rear parking sensors, plus a reversing camera. This line is a little bit sportier, with Alcantara trim, bigger 20-inch alloys, sports suspension and matrix LED headlights, while Black Edition replaces all chrome interior details with black alternatives. Top of the range for sprung, A7s have 21-inch wheels, adaptive wear suspension with four-wheel steering, plus an operated Bang & Olufsen stereo. Audi has dropped traditional physical controls for its air conditioning and infotainment systems and replaced them with a dual touchscreen setup. Make sure both screens work as they should and that they respond quickly to inputs and don't freeze up all the time. If these are presenting issues, you may need to have a software update performed at an Audi workshop. Every version comes with front and rear parking sensors and a rear view camera, but you should still look for damage to the extremities of the car. Also, many come with enormous 20-inch alloy wheels, there are even 21-inch ones on Wolfsprung models, that are susceptible to curb damage and can be expensive to repair. The latest A7 is still a bit too new to have thrown up any common issues as of yet. Audi as a brand doesn't have the best reputation for reliability. It only managed a 20th place finish out of 31 manufacturers, although this was better than fellow premium rivals such as BMW and Mercedes. The entry-level petrol might be good for company car drivers in the market for a new car, 
but there aren't many on the used market at the moment. There are plenty of diesels, however, and if your budget can stretch to the most powerful 50 TDI, you won't regret it. It offers a lot of performance, yet its running costs are similar to those of the lesser 45 TDI. We would suggest you go for a sport because it has all the equipment you could ever need and is a good compromise if you value comfort. S-Line adds sport suspension and 20-inch wheels that do nothing for ride quality, while the Wolfsprung is quite costly, and its standard air suspension doesn't cope with low speed lumps and bumps, as well as it should. Our favorite Audi A7, 50 TDI Sport. Well, if you are the owner of this car, then please describe the problem that you had to face during the operation of the car. Perhaps it is your feedback that will help viewers when choosing a car. That's it for today. Thanks everyone for attention. It isn't much work for you to subscribe to the channel. See you soon.